allows uh, a drag feeder, which is a, a type of tape feeder where the tape is dragged across the table instead of driven by an actual feeder. Uh, this allows that type of feeder to have visual feedback and allows the system to uh, more accurately calibrate where it picks up parts from. So we're going to go through um, the basic setup of the machine itself so that we know all the terms involved in the drag feeder operation and then we'll go through the process of actually setting up a drag feeder. So the first thing we'll do is start the machine. This enables <clears throat> steppers, movement, and anything else that needs to be started up. We're going to look through some settings that are already set up. Um, I've set these up previously, but these are settings that you would generally set up the first time you set up your machine and then never touch again. So the first one um, is under the cameras tab. We have uh, a table scanner camera, which is a camera that I use for debugging, it uses um, a series of images that are pre-recorded instead of an actual camera looking at a, a table. Um, but for the purposes of the demonstration, it's, it's the same as a camera looking at the table. It just looks a little funky. So the first thing we're going to look at is the location and offsets section here. Um, and what we see is that the camera has a negative 5 offset in the Y axis um, from the tool. In OpenPNP, everything that has an offset or a location is in relation to where the tool is, and um, specifically the tip of the tool at any, at any time. So what we're saying here is that the physical location of this camera, which is attached to head H1, as you can see here, the physical location of this camera is negative 5 units in the y-axis from the tip of the tool. And what that actually means is um, when the camera is mounted to the head, um, it's, in this case, it's five millimeters closer to the user um, in the y-axis. And uh, this will just be something that's specific to your machine. You'll set it up however your machine is set up and just go from there. Um, that's all for the camera. The other thing that's important is under actuators the drag feeder uses a pin of some type to drag the, the tape across the table in this case we have an actuator called pin set up it's attached to head H1 which is the only head look over here the only head that we have in the system is H1 the actuator is attached to head H1 and it has a set of offsets as well in this case this the offsets are negative 5 in X and negative 5 in Y so it's at the same location in Y as the camera is, and it's five units to the left of the camera in physical space. And the reason these offsets are important is that once we get into the process of configuring the feeder, these offsets are used to position either the actuator, the tool, or the camera for the various feeder operations. So the last thing to look at before we actually get to the feeder is the head itself. And we have our basic head definition here. Um, the things that are of interest are we have the feed rate, rate set to 5,000. This is um, in units per minute, and my machine is set up in millimeters, so this is 5,000 millimeters per minute. <coughs> and um, that is the feed rate that's going to be used uh, for pretty much all operations that don't have an override feed rate, and we'll talk about override feed rates when we get to the feeder. But for the time being, it's important to know that that's the feed rate that'll be used um, whenever the head is moving under its own control. So now we go to the feeders tab and we're going to start setting up a tape feeder. Um, I'll show you on the camera what the feeder uh, looks like that we're going to be setting up here. So you'll see that this, uh, this camera lags behind a little bit. It's loading a lot of images from disk so just have to be patient with it. So I'm using the keyboard jog controls just to jog over and show the, the part that we're going to want to pick up and the location that we're going to want to pick it up from. Um, in this case, we have a feeder that's on the table. It's an acrylic feeder. It's got some slots cut into it. And uh, there's a slot for picking up the parts themselves. And then further down, there's a smaller slot which can be used to actually um, drag the tape across the uh, feeder. So the first thing that we're going to do is go up here and look at the part that we're going to be wanting to pick up. And I'm going to center over that part. This is the part that we're going to be working with, and we're going to assume for the demonstration that 
this is where that part actually is on the table. So we go to new feeder, create a reference tape feeder, and this is because we're working with tapes in this case. Um, we also support tray feeders, which uh, will be the topic of another video, but a tray feeder allows you to basically just tape a tray of parts down onto your table and then pick in sequence from that uh, tray. But we're doing tape this time, so we'll accept that. And we see the feeder gets created. It has ID F0. That can be changed if you like. We're going to enable the feeder immediately. And then we're going to do the basic uh, general configuration for the feeder first. We're going to pick the part that it's going to serve. Um, in this case, the, the part database isn't complete for uh, these parts, and it doesn't really matter at this point. So we're just going to pick a resistor. And then well, we'll have to edit that out. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is define the pickup location. This is the location <clears throat> that, um, in general terms, the feeder is going to go to to try to pick up the part. So what we do is we can use the keyboard using the jog controls, and we basically just want to center on the part as well as we can. A uh, future version of the software will have um, a square the size of the part to make it easier to do this, but basically you just want to get your crosshairs right on the center of the part. And once you've done that, you'll see next to the pickup location, um, you can either fill the values in by hand, there's four values here, and you can just copy them from the DROs up here. Um, or the other thing you can do is every place in the system where there is a location that needs to be filled in, there's five helper buttons. Um, the first captures the location that the camera is centered over. The second captures the location that the tool is centered over. The third captures only the Z coordinate that the tool is centered over. And this is for you, this is used for touching off on parts, which uh, we'll cover in another video. And then the last two buttons are movement buttons. These actually, uh, once you've set a location, you can use these buttons to center the camera or the tool over that location to double check your work. So in this case, we want to fill in the location with uh, where the camera is centered. So we just click the first button and you'll see that it fills in the values. One thing that's interesting here is the Y value does not match what you see in the DRO, um, but you'll notice that it is the value that you see in the DRO, which is 44.9 minus the negative 5 of the camera offset that we saw when we set up the camera to get 39.9. And what that's done is the system has defined um, the location of the camera in reference to where the tool is, but what we store um, in our configuration is where the tool itself needs to go to pick up uh, the part. So in this case, the offset has automatically been applied. So we can press apply to save those values to the general configuration, and then we go over to the feeder specific configuration, which is where all the fun stuff happens. So the first thing that we'll set is the feed rate. This feed rate uh, overrides the main head feed rate, <clears throat> and it's only used when the tape is being dragged across the table. And what we found is that too high of a feed rate, especially the normal very fast feed rate, will cause parts to jump out of the tape and, and just tends to make a mess out of the parts in the tape. So you want a nice slow feed rate here. Um, it doesn't matter really how slow it is because we're only moving in most cases uh, between one and four millimeters. So there's not very far to go. So uh, it doesn't hurt to make this nice and slow. What we're gonna do is 100 millimeters per minute. Um, next we have to fill in the actuator ID. This is the actuator that will be used to drag the tape. And as we saw in the actuator setup, we just have ID pin for the one actuator in the system. So we're going to fill in pin. Uh, next, we've got a, some locations that need to be fill, filled in. The first is the feed start location. And this is the location where the pin needs to be dropped to start the feed operation, to start the actual drag operation. So we're going to use our drag controls or our jog controls here. We're going to go down to uh, the part of the feeder that exposes the holes for the tape. And uh, in, when these pictures were taken, part of the hole was uh, obscured a little bit by um, some film, but we're just going to ignore that. So we're going to kind of center in on that hole. And then same as before, just click the first button to copy that location. And then the next value we have to fill in is the feed end location. And this is just the next point that the tape should be dragged to to feed one part. 
So in this case, that's going to be one hole. And all we're going to do is just jog up to the center of that hole like that. And we're going to get a little closer here. And then copy that location in. We'll apply those settings. And now we get into the vision section. And this is where we actually, uh, everything that we've set up so far is enough for the system to actually feed the tape. But at this point, um, what we found is, is that over time, the tape gets a, a little further and further out of track and eventually gets to the point where you're not able to pick up uh, parts reliably. So this is why the vision system was added. The vision system uh, allows for correction for every single feed and uh, allows the system to correct the offset of the tape each time it feeds. So um, in theory, this is not well tested yet, but in theory, this should give you perfectly accurate feeding on each part. So we're going to enable the vision system. And the first thing we do is grab a template image. And what that is, is a picture of the part that you want to feed. Um, so we want to go back to uh, the part that we centered over originally. So I'm just going to jump back to the general config. And I'm going to click on the position the camera over the center location for the pickup location. And we can see we're back over the part. So I'm going to, I'm selecting the template image here. I'm going to click select. And this opens up the select window on the screen. And we're just going to use the handles on this window to get a picture as close as we can of just the part itself. So we've got a pretty good selection right there. We hit confirm to grab that. And you can see that the image gets copied into the little box here. So that's a good picture of the part that we're going to be picking up. And it doesn't matter if the part is upside down or backwards. The system um, accounts for that. So we're going to apply that setting. And then the last setting that we need to set up is the area of interest. The area of interest is basically a way to cut down the amount of the image that the uh, vision system will scan in. And it reduces false positives. Um, by keeping you from finding other parts that may match on the table. As you can see, we have another part right here and we have half of another part up here. So if the vision system were to look at this image, it might find that this is the part that it wants or it may even choose this part up here when really we wanted to get this one. Um, the other, the, the part of the area of interest that is very important is that we wanna capture a section of the tape that covers however far the tape might get out of skew as it's driven. Um, it doesn't need to be very big because we're correcting on each movement of the tape. So what I like to do is um, select a field about twice the size of the image that we're trying to capture in one axis and then the same width as the image in the other axis. So showing you that, if we press select here, we get another selection box up in the camera screen. And we're just going to move this so that it's clearly got the image that we want to grab within the bounds but there's not really any chance of another part ending up in that same area and there's enough of a of wiggle room there that if the part is off by a millimeter or two in e in either direction we're still going to see that and be able to zero in on it so confirm that and hit apply and that's all the settings we need for setting up that feeder. So now what we can do is test our settings. Um, we can go through some of the locations that we've set up. We've already visited the pickup location, which is where we're centered now. We can look at the feed start location and make sure that's what we wanted. So if we click the position the camera button, we should go down to the feed start location. And that looks good. And then position the camera on the feed end location and that looks good. So now we can attempt a feed operation. Um, there's a button up here that allows you to just feed any particular feeder and um, so we're going to click that and it looks like the camera um, is lagging behind quite a bit so it might be hard to see all the operations that happen here but uh, hopefully we will see that. Actually I think I'll I'll decrease the the head feed speed a bit to make that a little uh, more likely to be seen. I'm going to slow this way down to just a thousand. So we'll go back to our feeder here and we'll hit feed 
And what we can expect to happen is we want to center over where we expect to see the part. Then uh, the vision system does its work and it calculates an offset from where we expected to see the part to where the part was found. Then we're going to move down to the feed location. And what you'll see that's interesting is that the feed location will actually be offset. And that offset is combined with the vision offset and the actuator offset. So what's actually being centered over the feed hole is the actuator and not the camera. We'll move slowly across the table to drag the tape. And then we'll move back to the pickup location. We'll run the vision again um, to calculate the offset for the next feed operation. And, uh, and at that point, the feed operation is complete. So let's test it out. That looked good. <clears throat> so we saw that the uh, offset was handled for the actuator. Um, since we had just finished configuring this, there is no offset on the vision system, but the vision system did recenter uh, on um, the part once it finished. So everything looks good there, and uh, this feeder is ready to go. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, should have some more demo videos coming up soon. Bye.